Okay. Mm. Okay. There's something sizzling in the kitchen today. This is one of my happy sounds. And as you see, it's actually cheese. And this is uh, called Nablusi cheese. It's from, uh, it comes from the city of Nablus in Palestine. And it's very similar to halloumi cheese as well. And this particular one that I'm frying right now in a little bit of clarified butter, which is incredible, um, I made homemade here at home. So I just want to show you, it doesn't take very long. It gets nice and brown or golden and crispy. And because the cheese is um, salty, uh, I mean, it's just begging for a nice cup of tea. It's just beautiful. Um, I'm going to show you today exactly how I make this from scratch. So this is the ending. So we're starting backwards today. And I'm going to go now to the beginning when we come back and I'll show you exactly how we got here. I promised you cheese and we're going to make cheese right from the beginning. Here in my big pot, I actually have seven liters of milk. This is sheep's milk and I get it from my local farmer, which is about an hour away from my house. I call in advance and I ask her and she gets it ready for me fresh. So I left early this morning, picked up the milk and came running back to do my cheese. Now I love sheep's milk because it is very, very, I'm gonna turn my um, heat off. Uh, it's very, very creamy. It's like working with cream and it is the ideal milk to make this particular cheese and any cheese actually, but this particular cheese. Um, in the Arab world, um, sheep and goat are the meat of choice for eating and also uh, the dairy that comes from them is what we use. So if you want the authentic taste, that's the kind of milk that you need. But of course, you can do this with cow's milk too, okay? I just love this and I wanted to do it exactly the way um, you know, I like and the, the taste. So with making cheese, um, if you've never made it before, you do not boil the milk. The heat of the milk has to be very, very um, lukewarm, like barely, barely warm. Exactly, it's going to be at 90 degrees, okay? So 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it's gone a little bit over here, but that's still okay. 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about a little bit over 30 degrees Celsius. And that is the ideal temperature, okay, to introduce the magic ingredient that's going to coagulate the protein, okay, the casein, and um, actually help separate the milk solids from the whey, which is the water. Okay, so you have to you have to add something, and that magic ingredient is um, a coagulant that is called rennet. Um, you can get it in powder form, pill form. I like to use liquid. Do about a quarter cup of water here. This is just plain water, and I'm going to use my measure here to put in exactly a quarter of a teaspoon. That's all you need. That's what I mean. It's magic. So I add this to my water and then stir it well, okay? And then once it's incorporated, you introduce it to, to the milk. And I just wanna show you how, I mean, you can't tell obviously the temperature, but I can just put my finger in and it's, it's just warm. It's like body temperature basically, okay? So I'm going to stir as I'm adding my water with the, with the liquid rennet. So I stir it really well for a good minute or two just to ensure that the um, that it gets incorporated well, that every inch of this milk is going to be touched by the rennet. And this enzyme that's inside the rennet now is going to help separate the milk solid from the whey, as I said. And um, that's it. This is the first step, okay, in getting to the cheese, okay? So you have to go through a couple of steps. Now, what I do is after I've done this, of course the heat is off, I don't move my pot, keep it exactly where it is. I take a lid, the lid, and cover it, and I leave it untouched, no movement, for about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour. 45 minutes is sufficient, but if it went to an hour, no big deal. Okay, so I leave it alone, and then I will show you after that time passes, What's the next step? All right, take uncover my milk 
And now I just want you to see, um, I'm just going to give it a little shake. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this is one solid curd right now, okay? Now, I want to um, help these curds now break up and release the whey. And you do that. First of all, I want to test it, just to show you, just a test, just, so, just in case you're not sure if it's um, thick enough. So I just use my little finger, and right in the center, I just want to see if I press inside that it actually comes back together, okay? So I've made a, an incision, but it, immediately it heals itself, so I know that it's solid enough to cut, okay? This was my mother's technique, by the way. She used to do this. All right, so I start with my knife and I cut through and I'm basically going and making straight lines just as if I'm cutting a cake all the way down. So I'm going right to the bottom. I'm going to go the opposite direction and start in the center and now I'm going to make little squares. And if you can picture now as I'm cutting this, the actual cuts that I'm making are cutting right down to the bottom. So if you had a camera looking through the side, you'd see that the, um, the actual cuts are very, very long. They go from top to bottom. So I want to also take my sink, uh, sorry, um, knife and angle it and try to cut horizontally as best as I could. It's not easy in a round pan, but you know, uh, pans only come in round. Uh, if it was square, it would be perfect, but you know, it's not a perfect world. So we work with what we have. So here I am trying to break the curds and try to go different directions, all right, to try to get things moving, okay? It's not going to be perfect. You can see already that there are, they're into cubes, and you're trying to get as many cubes as possible, okay? And you can also see from me doing this that just by moving it around and cutting it, I've already encouraged the separation of the curds and the whey. So the whey is the water that's already on the surface. So that is going to help this process, okay? So after that's done, I put my knife aside, I'm going to cover it, and I'm gonna leave it about 10 minutes. And that's just to allow it to sink a little more, um, collect itself, collect its thoughts, and um, I'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. All right, here we go. As you can see, in the 10 minutes that it's sat, you can see the, the way already the, the magic is happening, basically, the separation. I'm going to hook my thermometer back on, and I'm going to turn the heat back on now. And that is just to encourage the way again to separate from the curd. Okay, so right now it's still at a little more than 90 degrees and I'm waiting for it to go to 100 which is about um, about 40 degrees Celsius okay and I bring my spoon in and don't be afraid to stir gently and you can see the result of all that cutting you see all the curd and just a little extra heat encourages um, the way to separate a little more this is the exact same way of making, um, I mean, a lot of the basic cheeses that we have in the Arab world are made in the same way. Akkawi, if you've ever heard of it, is the same, uh, essentially. And uh, halloumi, I mean, everybody loves halloumi cheese. I'm sure um, uh, you know what uh, halloumi cheese is. And basically, it starts out the same. This is the kind of cheese that is the same as halloumi. And um, it's special in many ways, not just because it's sheep's milk or goat's milk, it, or even could be a mix of both. Um, there's also a process at the end uh, whereby you have to actually um, boil this cheese after it's become solid. And I'll show you that step when we get to it. So what I'm going to do here for the next maybe, oh, 10 minutes or so, stir it until it reaches the temperature that I want it. So it's not quite there. Uh, as soon as it gets to 100, I'm going to turn off the heat, cover it, and just leave it to rest for another 10 minutes before I pour it out and put it in my cheesecloth. Next stage, 
I have all my setup here. I know it looks a little uh, elaborate, but you need to do this to, to do it the right way. All right, what I have here is beautiful cheesecloth. And this is the kind that you um, wash and reuse. It's not a disposable. I love it. And um, I only use it for cheese or when I'm making lebni, which is that strained yogurt. So I have this sitting on top of this strainer. This is actually an old strainer that my mother brought with her from Palestine, one of the many treasures that I have with me right now. And look at how much it's been used. She used to use this as anything that she wanted to strain from and including the cheese. So I'm going to use that. Now here in the sink, I have um, a pot because I want the water or the whey that's going to come out of the cheese to actually collect in the pot because the water is an important component in making this cheese. So don't throw it away. Okay. So already I'm making a nice little bed for my cheese curds right now. And the cheese has settled. And as you can see, it's mostly water on the surface and the solid has come down, the, the curds that is. And then you start very, very slowly. It's not light actually, I'm glad I worked out today. Okay, I can handle it. All right, so I'm pouring and it's going right through the cheesecloth, right into the pot. Okay, and do it very, very slowly because you don't want your curds just to Splash down, okay, you want to control it. As soon as you've got most of the water out, okay, I'm usually ready with my hand to be able to catch the curd so they don't go anywhere I don't want them to go. So very gently, with a little bit of love and a little bit of patience, okay, there it is. Okay, it's been caught. So I'm just gonna move this around a little bit just to contain it. My hands are clean and washed, ready for this. And then I'm going to wrap this little bundle of joy with my cheesecloth. I've already prepared, um, th there's pans under here to catch the excess water. And there's also uh, a wooden block where I'm going to actually sit my cheese. So I'm going to pick up my cheese in one go, okay? and I'm going to place it on top of the wood. All right, and just fold that over, make it nice and smooth. Like I said, it's a bundle of joy. All right, and just press on it. And what we're trying to do with this process is we're trying to eliminate a lot of the whey to come out and trying to make all of those broken small curds into one big curd so that we can cut it. And then you get yourself something really heavy. Look at how heavy this is. Oh my God, all right, but it's perfect. If your board isn't heavy enough, you can just put a pot on top of it or, you know, two kilos of flour, sugar, whatever you can find, okay? And um, you can see automatically the water starting to, to come out. So I leave this for about 15 minutes like this, okay, for the first, uh, for the first uh, uh, stage. And then after 15 minutes, I take this out and I pick up my my um, cheese curd as is, don't unravel it, and just flip it over to the other side, put this on top, and let it sit for another 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes have lapsed, so I'm going to do the flip. Ooh, this very heavy thing, okay, and I'm just going to pick it up, and don't be afraid, have no fear, okay, and that's it. That's how it happens, you flip, and then you put this back, and wait another 15 minutes, okay? And then we'll be ready to cut. Now, do you remember that water that we poured out when we uh, poured the curd into the uh, cheesecloth, which is, which is happy right now uh, being pressed? That water is now here in the pot where we saved it, and I brought it up to boil. Now, the beautiful thing about making this cheese and with, with any cheese is that you get a little bonus a little treat, okay? So as you see, the milk curds or the milk solids right now here that are flo floating to the surface, these are um, the curds that are going to give us another type of cheese, okay? I'm sure you've heard of ricotta cheese. This is what ricotta cheese is. It's cheese that's been, or the curd has been cooked twice, a second time. So this is the second cooking of this whey. So we're going to take 
what is on the surface and we can put it in a traditional uh, plastic container like this like I use this to do my feta cheese or you could do it for for ricotta as well or I feel like uh, doing a little heart um, uh, container all right so if you can come over here and see as the water is bubbling do you see that those beautiful wobbles are gorgeous curds that are coming out of the water so this is just a, an extra bonus of you know um, uh, a blessing you're getting a little extra the cheese that you're making um, you're getting a little extra of something and you know long ago when people used to make cheese and cheese was a thing that people did in their homes it's not something that they bought from uh, supermarkets uh, whatever cheese they made uh, they made it at home and nobody wasted anything this water would as you can see you get a different type of cheese and this very same water um, you can use to bake with you can use to uh, you know as a um, as a liquid for any type of cooking because it's still full of nutrients and and flavor and nobody um, actually gets rid of that my heart here with all these beautiful wobbly curds and then what I do is I have a little bit of cheesecloth here that's nice and clean and actually I'm going to turn this off because I've got everything I needed and I just put my cheesecloth on top and just cover it here just so that it absorbs more liquid and what is going to happen is going to take the shape of the heart and all the excess water as you can see is pouring out and I'm just going to put it back in the pot and then eventually this cools and you use it exactly that's what it is it's ricotta cool it in the refrigerator cover it with plastic wrap and you can put a little bit of sugar honey treat it as you would any ricotta that you would buy at the supermarket except this is 10 times better because you made it and we made it with a lot of love all right so i'm going to make a little flavor parcel now and this is just clean cheesecloth and uh, this flavor is actually made up of two things that are indicative of the flavor that is in nabulsi cheese and halloumi cheese and particularly nabulsi uh, the way we make it in the, in, um, in the Arab world and in, in Palestine specifically so uh, what we do is the flavors the, the ones that my mother used to put and she told me this is the flavor of back home whenever she used to tell me Jibni, oh, the cheese the nabulsi cheese has to have this flavor and what I've put in here are mastic okay mastic is a kind of resin that grows naturally on a special tree uh, which is native to Greece uh, and, and not just any place it's the island of I hope I can pronounce it right Chios okay I think I, I said it right Chios if any Greek friends out there are gonna correct me and tell me how to pronounce it but I've tried my best so there's mastic and uh, mastic is actually very very special and not very cheap uh, it's more abundant now but it was it was something that was very much uh, prized and it's also known as um, or they call them the tears of Chios which means they are the tears that actually come down on the bark and they dry on, on uh, as a resin so that's how they are referred to so they're very very special and here I've got about half a teaspoon of mahlab and mahlab is that kernel that lives inside of a special cherry pit and it's actually the the cherry tree that is called Saint Lucie and it's native to the Arab world and um, I've used it before when we were making the cake if you remember those nice little uh, cookies the butter cookies that I made so this is a flavor along with the mastic that is very much part of this particular cheese so I'm going to make myself a little flavor parcel that's exactly what this is and this parcel is going to get dropped inside the water the cooking water uh, the liquid that we've saved the way to um, to finish our cheese so it's going to flavor the cheese in a very very special way so now the unveiling here it is you can see this is the the big cheese curd okay so I'm going to take it out of this cheesecloth now and you have to have a little bit of confidence no fear okay you basically pick it up like from here okay like that and drop it just like that so here is my big piece of curd I mean you can pick it up it's quite solid all right and now the cutting begins so I'm just using my big knife and cut straight down all the way and I like to cut it 
into uh, smaller cubes. You just cut a piece here and here just so you can see the texture of this cheese. It's nice and solid. Okay, there's no bubbles or holes. It's quite dense. Okay, but it's very bland right now. There's no salt in it. There's nothing. I mean, it's just, I mean, if you would bite into it, it's, it's, it's very bland. So it needs a little help. So um, I'm going to continue cutting this and then I'm going to show you um, how we're going to complete this cheese and give it the much needed flavor that it's crying for. Okay, we're in the final stretch right now. We're about to eat the cheese. We're trying to get to the cheese. And now this is the last step. This is something unique about this cheese is that after you've turned it into curds, which is what we did, you have to boil it. And I'm boiling it in the actual way. So that's why it's important for this water not to be thrown out. You need it for this process, okay? So this helps to stabilize the cheese and uh, allows it to get harder. And um, uh, when you're uh, using it, you could, um, you're able to fry it, you're able to bake with it, you're able to do many, many, many things, and it allows it to uh, withstand more heat. Now you also notice that, you see that little, that little parcel that I put in earlier, okay, that's floating, it's there now, and that is actually flavoring the, um, the cheese. And you can't smell it, but I can, I can smell that beautiful mastic and that mahlab, and that is just so reminiscent of this cheese and I remember that flavor so so well and um, uh, you'll see uh, that, that it, it, it is really something very very special. Alright so how do I know that the cheese is ready? Uh, it's not going to take very long and I don't have to sit here and, and coax it or, or cook it uh, too long. If ever you've made um, gnocchi and you know gnocchi when you put it inside the hot water um, you know it's done when it floats to the surface. It doesn't take very long, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. As soon as they start floating to the surface, then you know it's time to take them out. I just want to show you exactly what's happened. And that took about, oh, about five minutes for that to happen. So you see, other than the little parcel here that of course is floating, the cheese is starting to float to the top. Okay, and just use something that's slotted and gentle, and very gently with a little love, you fish it out. And then I have here just a, a rack uh, sitting on top of um, parchment and a tray just to catch any excess water. You just lift them out very gently. Be careful because they're very, very delicate at this point. All right, so now while the, um, the cheese is still quite pliable and soft, Okay, I bring my salt, and you can't use iodized salt. You need cheese salt, which is basically non-iodized salt. So um, it's it's just pure salt. There's no additives. There's nothing in it. That's the kind of cheese, that, uh, sorry, uh, salt that you need. So you basically are going to sprinkle on it while it's still hot. Okay, so that it absorbs some of this salt. And have you ever seen halloumi cheese? Okay, and how and how it has always a fold. Well, this is how the fold happens. While it's still pretty pliable, like this, you basically fold it over, okay, and just press on it long enough that it takes the shape, and just salt it a little bit more, okay, and leave it. Doesn't that look like halloumi cheese? Now the salt is going to absorb in this cheese and it's going to give it the flavor it's it's craving As aside of course from the mastic and the mahlab that's in it so that that flavor has seeped inside and now the salt so the process basically is this you just boil you salt and then you leave them on a tray to drain completely as much as possible till they're fully fully cool and you can put as much or as little salt as you want and it all depends on how long you want to keep and how, how much of a, a quantity you make. Now I usually make a large quantity and I store them in jars in brine. I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. And uh, whenever I want um, you know, uh, this cheese, instead of going through this whole process that we did today, it's, it's a long process, it's already there. You do it once and it's there and you can, you, know, you can keep that in your refrigerator, especially when it's in brine and salted for a year and nothing happens to it. Now, these jars have been um, 
uh, sterilized so they are clean and, and dry and basically just for sake of showing you what I do I after they're cold completely I place the cheese inside the jar and then here I've prepared a brine of 10 parts water to one part like for every 10 liters of water that I've boiled and cooled I add in about a thousand grams of salt same salt okay and that is the brine that the cheese is going to live in happily and stay uh, stay preserved so salt is the preserving agent here okay so all that hard work that we went through we certainly don't want our cheese to go moldy or anything to go wrong with it so I would fill that jar right to the rim and put the um, the brine in seal it put it in the refrigerator and and then you've got cheese to enjoy any time now traditionally the Nabilsi cheese actually is um, is salted even longer than that um, what I explained to you is probably more like the halloumi that is uh, quickly uh, that, that doesn't keep as long as the Nabilsi so what you would do is you would salt it leave it outside let it soak in uh, press on it more put more salt so every day you're salting it basically trying to get the more water out so the more uh, water is released the drier it becomes it actually becomes rock hard and that was the old-fashioned way of how people used to uh, preserve this cheese so that they would have it as their um, muni or part of their pantry for the whole year for the whole winter and uh, that that is basically it so our journey of cheese is um, is over and uh, I hope you uh, you enjoyed it I hope you will um, jump in and give it a try it certainly it's not something that you do um, you know in between uh, activities this is something you have to set aside a day for on the weekend neighbors friends your children your husband your wife whoever um, uh, maybe would like to help you it's a nice it's a nice activity and it and you get the reward of having this beautiful cheese to enjoy that you've made fresh and um, there's nothing quite like that, made with a lot of love. So um, until next time, um, enjoy your cheese uh, adventure, and I will see you again. Bye.